When you guys were making the trilogy, did you have a sense that it would have the impact that it has? Obviously, uh, you know, it's, it's based on a well of work, but did you have a sense that the films would, would, would connect and, and kind of have the cultural impact that they have, even, even a decade later? No, uh, we honestly didn't. We, uh, I think we all tried to make the best films that we could, but seriously, they could have went straight to DVD. There wasn't any feeling that these were going to be huge, or that, you know. And fantasy wasn't a big genre, you know. They, there wasn't really big, big fantasy movies, you know. So, you know, when we got to go to the Oscars and stuff, then it was that was all that stuff was a real surprise, I think. I think I think I felt like it might be big, but big to me meant you know like a big opening weekend. Right. <laughs> so I, I don't, there's no way to, I didn't know about conventions and stuff back then. I think Comic Con was something I like was loosely aware of, Harry Knowles or something, you know. Right. But uh, ain't it cool news, but, but no, I, there would have been no way to conceptualize this, uh, all this room full of people. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Can you tell us a little bit about, about getting the parts, about the audition process, and maybe the first time the two of you or Dominic and, and Elijah met? So the audition, um, as I understand it, and I may be wrong, was they, they had a sort of worldwide audition process at New York, Los Angeles, London, Sydney, and they narrowed it down through casting directors to maybe four people for each part in each city. And then Pete and his partner Fran flew around the world and saw everyone, read for them. They had scenes that were all top secret and they weren't scenes that were actually in the film. Or certainly the one, the Pippin one I did wasn't. Um, and then, yeah, it was that easy. So I, I read once for the casting director, went on tape and went to New Zealand. And then I met Pete and Fran. And then within a couple of weeks they called up, so do you want to play Pippin? Maybe. Mine was a little bit, that's basically my understanding of the whole of the process. I had a bit of an advantage because my father, John Aston, the original Gomez and the Adams family, he had, uh, he had worked for Peter and Fran on The Frighteners, and so he had spent time in New Zealand and he had been through the Weta. Um, experience. He played a character called the Judge, who had been dead 100, over a hundred years. So they did all this makeup with his jaw hanging off, and and uh, and he came home. Well, at one point he called me. They were in uh, Peter and Fran's garage, which they had kind of turned into a screening room. And he called with uh, with Peter and Fran and Michael J. Fox. They had just watched the uh, they just watched Rudy. <laughs> and they were just going on and on about how much they loved the movie and they thought it was wonderful. And this is years and years before Lord of the Rings. So when uh, it came time when we found out that it was, uh, you know, that it was going and going to have a chance to audition for it and everything, I, it was one of the few times in my life where I ever auditioned for something where I felt like there was a, there was a fan, there was a, a friend in the room. So I didn't feel nervous. I felt, you know, anxious because it's so great and you want to be a part of it, but I didn't have that, you know, wanting to prove myself to somebody. I knew they liked me and I knew they liked what I did, so it made it very comfortable. And But at the same, just like Billy auditioned and uh, Victoria Burroughs sent the, then there was video. Now video for kids who are in the room. <laughs> it's like your computer, only it's separate. Um, so... There was no, there was, a, what was it? There was like Napster or something we were doing. But anyhow, so, um, yeah, so then Peter and Fran came, and uh, interestingly, they, they then told me that when Fran was giving birth to Katie, Katie's older, right? No, Billy's no, older. Billy's older. Billy, when they were giving birth to, when she was giving birth to Billy, their oldest child, she, they were watching a film that I did when I was 19 where I played a drug addict. It was one of these. <laughs> It was, it was really dark, and uh, it was called Where the Day Takes You, and it was about homeless street kids who were on drugs and stuff. And I'm thinking, that's what you were watching? <laughs> My wife was playing, like, pretty music, and so, uh, yeah, that was, it was a pretty, but it took time. It, there was time between auditioning and, or time between hearing about it and auditioning, and then auditioning and waiting, and then waiting. And then the best moment was when they called and they said their, their a new line is asking for quotes. And that's code for you're about to get an offer. 
because they, they want to locate the offer within what you normally make as an actor. They don't want to offer you too little, they don't want to offer you too much, so they call for quotes. So you try and jack your quotes up. <laughs> uh, but uh, but that, was, that was a thrilling moment. And then I remember I was in a little office, I had gotten a little office, and uh, the phone rang and I was, st I, my, I had an assistant at that point, and he said, he said there was the name of three agents. And when everyone get, if, some, if you don't get the part, one agent who drew the short straw calls to tell you that you didn't get the job. <laughs> you know, listen, you know, it's not going forward on this movie or that movie. And, but I had three agents on the phone, so you're like, oh, that's going to be big. So I remember picking up the phone, and it was like this electricity in my hand. And then he goes, how would you like to go down there? They want you to play Sam. And I literally fell on my knees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty great. <laughs>